Welcome inside with the insiders, Tom Pelissero, Ian Rappaport. Happy to report, neither of us got benched. Is that maybe where Mike Garofolo went, Ian? Yeah, I think that's actually it. it. There's a lot of that going around, and this is the time of year when there's quarterback movement, there's injuries, there's intrigue, there's people not always being exactly forthright about what is going on with the quarterback position. I see you, Houston Texans. Uh, we are in it, Tom. We are in it. And yes, Mike Garofolo has been benched. I just confirmed that. Just got a text as we were talking. There's always a, one of these weeks or a couple of them during the course of the season where just a lot of stuff happens all at once. Let's take a look just at the quarterback movement that's taken place over the last 24 hours since we talked yesterday on the show about Sam Darnold taking over as the Panthers starter. Zach Wilson benched by the Jets. Mike White starts in his place. Justin Fields limited in walkthrough. Status still up in the air for this weekend. The Texans bench Davis Mills. It's going to be Kyle Allen starting against the Dolphins. The Rams have a situation. Matthew Stafford dealing with a concussion, among other issues. Uh, his backup, John Wolford, has also been nicked up here. So Bryce Perkins, as we reported earlier today, going to get first team reps. And then Kyler Murray saying he expects he's going to be back replacing Colt McCoy. we got to start in New York here, Ian. It is not often that you see a player drafted as highly as Zach Wilson was at number two overall just back in the 2021 draft, shuffled to the bench at this stage in the season on a team that, let's be clear, is very much in the thick of the playoff chase. Break it down for me. How do we get here and where do the Jets go from here? That's it. To me, of all the things we're talking about, like, yes, Zach Wilson has obviously not developed like they wanted. I think that is pretty clear for anyone watching. He, there's, It's been bad. I mean, I'm surrounded by a lot of Jets fans here in New York, and every Sunday everyone says the same thing to me. We look really good. The quarterback played bad. I mean, that's been basically every week. I don't think anybody would deny that. The major problem the Jets have is everything else is good, right? I mean, they're productive on offense. They got some weapons. They got a really, really good defense. Like, whatever Robert Sala did in San Francisco with that defense, he's doing in New York. It's exactly what the Jets thought they were getting. It is all good there, except for the quarterback. And that's what makes this different, Tom, than every other, most other quarterback situations is that they can have patience because they're basically betraying their locker room by keeping – playing him because he's been so bad so they got to play someone else who can make them somewhat competent in offense and I believe Salah in that they want to get him some snaps later in the season I just don't know when that's going to be because if they keep winning then it might short circuit everything if they play him well and that's just it yesterday we talked about the Panthers going to Darnold and that was part of their plan, which was, hey, we're probably not winning this division at this point. We're probably not making the playoffs. So let's at least evaluate what we have. The Jets are in the middle of this thing. I know that Sala was asked a follow-up question about how exactly is Zach going to play if you keep winning. And he basically said, well, we're just going to take this day by day here. It is remarkable, I think, to say the least, of a number two overall pick going to the bench at this stage on a good team here, Ian. But I also can't help but think back to what we spoke about with Zach Wilson prior to the draft, which is every coach was in love with, or just about every coach was in love with the tape, all the different things he could do, throwing off every platform, every arm angle. He could really whip it around the field, big arm, all those things. Then when you talk to the scouts, we're doing some of the backgrounding here in terms of him, in terms of leadership, off the field, all those other things. It wasn't bad, and he improved his last year in college, but it wasn't great either. And so I heard personally more doubts about Zach Wilson, just the person. Nothing, again, nothing bad in the background, just like about is he the guy, much more than I heard about the player. And here we are in a situation where three days after Zach Wilson holds a press conference, Ian, in which he Again, does not really take full responsibility like you might want to hear him do after a game. It ends up being that exact thing, the leader and the person that gets Zach Wilson benched, probably as much as the fact that he simply was too inaccurate in that game against the Patriots. It, it, it makes me think every quarterback evaluation is always about like, oh, he's got arm talent, he can throw from all the platforms, he's athletic, he can do this, he can that, he can get to his second read. All that's important, I get it. Like, we will talk about that till the end of time. But clearly, what is, at least to me, I shouldn't say clearly, to me, what is most important is when he's lost and he's playing bad and he's got to stand up there at the podium, do his teammates watch him with anticipation and go like, 
all right, like this is the guy who's going to have our backs or is it going to be the opposite? And clearly this was the opposite. I was struck by how few teammates came out in support of him the last couple days. It has been, unless I'm missing something, basically no one. There hasn't been a, like, you know, this is our guy, leave him alone, like media is the worst. Like there hasn't been any of that. It's been like, yeah, you know, we saw it, but we're not that worried. Like it's not been good. And the quarterback is different. You are part management, part coach, part quarterback, and none of this helped. It all matters. And I don't know if he would have kept his job had he really taken accountability, but it made it easy to take away from him because he didn't. Well, and how often has that guy ever worked, Ian, when you're poking those types of holes in him in the pre-draft process? I mean, you can argue that Kyler Murray had a lot of personality things and leadership things that were poked with him, and... He ended up getting a second contract worth a lot of money with Arizona, went to the playoffs last year, but you continue to hear that drumbeat of just, can you build around him in the long haul? You think back years ago, Connor Cook, among others, was a guy who dropped in the draft. Zach Wilson still went number two didn't overall. Dad, didn't fling it all over Cook's the place. Dad and you thought, you on Twitter? Uh, that, is, that is true, yes. Uh, took a yes. number of different I shots never at me. Um, Yes. Listen, one of the things I do before the draft every year is write just the truth, the good and the bad of what people are saying within the league about quarterbacks. Sometimes the league is completely wrong. A lot of times if you go back and you read the stuff from pre-draft, it's like, yeah, that was kind of the direction that this thing uh, ended up going. And let's go back to that draft class too, Ian, because it was in 2021, the top three picks end up being quarterbacks. And while it's still very early here, we're a year and a half in for these guys. Think about this. Number one pick is Trevor Lawrence. He's been solid. There's a lot to build with there. But, you know, rookie year was basically a wash because of Urban Meyer. And now he's trying to rebuild it and gather some momentum in year two. The number two pick is Zach Wilson, who just got benched. Number three pick is Trey Lance, who's hurt. And basically he's been hurt each time that he has played. And Jimmy Garoppolo, meanwhile, back in the lineup, the guy that they were willing to move on from for Lance. Yeah. And so you end up with Trey Lance now. We don't know exactly what the future holds there. Justin Fields, who went number 11, he's the one who has certainly improved over the course of the season. But we're going to talk about him in a second here. I'll see how long I can filibuster. Let's cut Ian's mic just for a second here. I can keep going. But Justin Fields, you see the upward trajectory, at least on his career, and you're hoping that, you know, as he deals with that left shoulder injury, that he's going to be able to come out on the other side of this. And certainly you would anticipate he will. Everybody in the building loves him and the toughness and all that stuff. Mac Jones, it's been, I think, up and down. I think that that's fair to say. Sorry, And the Tom. next quarterback um, taken now I can uh, after you. that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Tom. Sorry, uh, just wanted to report that Daryl Henderson, the former Rams starter, was claimed by the Jaguars, according to me and you. Uh, that is something that we both just reported while you were talking, and uh, I was taking phone calls, which makes a lot of sense. I think for the Jaguars, this is a – look, it's a potential – starter it's a potential bell cow obviously they have travis Etienne, who they do a lot of fun stuff with but we've seen teams including your cowboys uh make real good use of two multi-talented quarterback uh running backs this is actually a really intriguing claim by the jaguars well and remember they traded james robinson a month or so ago they now replace him with a guy in Daryl Henderson who is healthy, whereas they were concerned about uh, the knee on James Robinson, and you picked up an extra draft pick. So for when people were saying what exactly were the Jaguars thinking, you can project that Daryl Henderson, the starting running back for the Rams, is going to get cut a month or so later, but they end up with a pick and a young player who's still going to be on a rookie contract as opposed to James Robinson, who was going to be uh, his contract up after the season. Back to the quarterbacks here for a second, Ian, as I was going back through that 2021 class. So I mentioned the four guys taken in the – excuse me, five guys taken in the first round. It was then Kyle Trask, who we haven't seen yet. He's been behind Tom Brady in Tampa. Who knows? Kellen Mond, who was released in his second training camp by the Vikings – and then the only other quarterback taken in the first three rounds was Davis Mills, who coincidentally on the same day Zach Wilson was benched, also got benched by the Houston Texans. There was, I would say, a muted reaction to that move uh, today, which, you know, as you covered here, Mike Garofolo tweeted it, even though you and I knew a day or so ago, and then we're holding it and waiting for yeah. a certain level of confirmation. Didn't come. Good for Mike. Good scoop. Uh... And nothing's going to save the Texans. Let's be blunt about this. But this is an acknowledgement here that Nick Casario's first draft pick is probably not going to be the savior. And the Texans, barring some type of amazing resurgence. Listen, Kyle Allen's played. He's played some good football in the course of his career going back to Carolina and Washington. 
that roster around him is just, it's, there's a lot of young pieces, but he doesn't have a lot of guys to throw to here. Unless they have some amazing surge, they have the number one pick, Ian. They are very much in line for the number one pick, and they're going to have their choice then of those other quarterbacks as they kind of reboot their entire operation. Uh, By the way, speaking of quarterback news, um, we'll get to more of that in a second. Matthew Stafford has just been ruled out. So he is in the concussion protocol, but uh, one thing that Sean McVay has said is he was experiencing numbness in his legs. So there is some wonder about whether it's a neck issue, maybe in addition to a concussion or instead of, or it's not clear. But anyway, he has been ruled out, which means, stop me if you heard this, Bryce Perkins is expected to get the first team reps this week in practice, could end up starting. Did I grab him in fantasy yesterday? I don't know. There's a lot of things that happened yesterday. It's tough to remember, but that was one of those things, yes. Did you grab him in fantasy after I told you that he was going to get first team reps? Uh, I have no comment. I already said no comment. So Matthew Stafford, one might say out indefinitely at this point in the concussion protocol, also dealing with additional issues, according to Sean McVay, Rams team that's very much on the brink here, 34-year-old quarterback. You would certainly anticipate that they're going to approach this with the utmost caution. Okay, we got a lot more to get to. There's a ton more news over the past few days here, including another quarterback situation in New Orleans where Jameis Winston, to say the least, uh, not thrilled that he is not back in as the starting quarterback for a Saints team that somehow is still fighting and staying alive there in that uh, NFC South. We'll talk about that after this on The Insiders. The Insiders are on TikTok. That's where you can follow us at The Insiders NFL or just hold up your phone right there. Take the QR code. That'll take you directly to our page. A lot of fun, a lot of news. Join us on TikTok as if this show is not enough for you already. Tom Pellicero and Ian Rappaport with you. Before we move on to the Saints and the current situation there surrounding their quarterbacks and Jameis Winston, let's go back to something, Ian, that formally broke when Sean McVay had a press conference that was going on during our first segment of the show. Matthew Stafford officially out for this week's game for the Rams. Nothing beyond that as of now with McVeigh, who said that Stafford is in the concussion protocol. That does not necessarily mean that he has a concussion, but after taking a hit in the game this past weekend, he began to feel numbness down his legs. McVeigh is calling it a neck issue as of now with Matthew Stafford. They are obviously going to proceed carefully here. This is not a surprise, Ian. This is something that uh, we've been tracking over the last couple of days here. Certainly sounds like Bryce Perkins is going to end up being the starting quarterback for the Rams uh, coming up this weekend. He's at minimum going to get the first team reps because John Wolford also dealing with a neck injury. But when it comes to Stafford, 34 years old, dealt with a lot of injuries in his career, um, you know, beat up in his days in Detroit, played through the elbow last season, played through the elbow earlier this season, now dealing with a neck issue, had a concussion, he got taken out with the concussion protocol again. It's hard to imagine we're going to see him back on the field unless the Rams can somehow find a way to get some wins here and stay in the playoff picture for 2022. But it raises real questions about what direction do the Rams head in general here at a time that certainly if they miss the playoffs, you would think that there's going to be some major retooling that goes into that roster in the offseason. Yeah, and we know, Tom, the Rams do not rebuild. Uh, They're going to reload. And if something happens to Stafford that makes it so he can't play or doesn't play or isn't going to play or future in doubt going forward, I would assume they're going to do the same exact thing they did last time, which is, go get the best quarterback option and move forward. We've seen him do it before. I would expect him to do it again. We are getting way ahead of ourselves, but I don't think you're wrong in discussing all of this because Stafford has been through so much, and he plays through everything. I mean, anyone who watched him in Detroit knows he literally plays through everything. This feels a little bit different to me. Sounded like he was having trouble feeling his legs, experiencing some numbness. This isn't like, all right, well, he has a sprained AC joint or separated a shoulder and he's in pain, but... He can fight through it just like on that famous NFL Films clip we've all seen a million times, right? This is not that. This is functional, and can he get out on the football field? That is very, very different, and if that's the case, then you do wonder, does he play this year? He's 34. His wife has been outspoken about his health. He's made a ton of money. So the future, there's a lot of questions about the future. That's what it seems to me. 
And certainly best wishes with Matthew Stafford. These are the serious types of things. We talk about, you know, ankle injuries and knee injuries and things like that when you're talking about your head, your neck, not being able to feel your legs. Those are the scary kind of real world sensitive issues here. I think that all of us who have dealt with Matthew Stafford yeah. over uh, the course of his career, and I certainly have a bunch, you know, I, to a man, everybody likes Matthew Stafford within the league. And so certainly oh, yeah. best of wishes with him as he sorts through that entire uh, situation. Let's go elsewhere, Ian, down to New Orleans, where, well, we have to go inside the drama. Andy Dalton took over as the starting quarterback when Jameis Winston initially at attempted to play through a back, and I believe it was an ankle injury, then didn't play particularly well. They pulled him back. According to Jameis, he was told, once you're healthy, you're getting the job back. Well, Dennis Allen said recently he's probably not going to be 100% healthy through the course of this season. Jameis is not happy that he's not getting the job back. Where where do we go in New Orleans at a time that Jameis is the guy who actually is signed beyond this season, but everything seems like it's up in the air at that spot? Yeah, I would say it's really up in the air at that spot. My understanding of that conversation was a little different than Jameis's. Not to doubt him at all, but it sounded like something like, I would never take away your starting job because of an injury. But if we're rolling, then I think we're going to keep rolling. And that's been the biggest problem is that with, you know, if, if you take away the fourth quarter two weeks ago from Andy Dalton when he didn't look great, he actually has looked pretty good. His receivers have let him down. There's been like the game in London when, you know, balls bouncing off hands. I mean, there's, there's been some unfortunate situations. It feels like everything that could go wrong for the Saints has gone wrong. But Andy Dalton has played okay. And it feels to me like they're really good with the combination of Andy Dalton and Taysom Hill kind of going back and forth, snaps for both of them. And I understand why Jameis is upset. I also understand that he shouldn't have played when he was dealing with the back thing a couple weeks ago. And he hasn't looked great either. So like, what is Dennis Allen supposed to do? Get the secure quarterback who gives him a chance to win or Jameis who you just literally have no idea. Plus, you just never know what you're gonna get with Jameis. You just never know. Um, so I don't blame Dennis Allen at all, and I guess I understand why Jameis is upset, but my understanding of the conversation was different than his. We'll also remember the Saints, uh, based upon how they've restructured contracts for years now, and then through the pandemic, when the salary cap dipped, have been eating tons of dead money, and they've got a really tough cap situation into 2023. So having Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton, who I believe combined are making under $20 million this season, that's one way that you can kind of you know circumvent things and still be able to do some things in free agency here. It also brought to mind something I was thinking about earlier today, Ian, with all these quarterback changes we've seen around the league again, with Zach Wilson benched, with Davis Mills benched, uh, with what's happening in New Orleans. How many teams going into this offseason are we going to have to be talking about what they do at the quarterback position. I mean, there, there are a bunch of them right now. I don't know that you look at the Patriots and necessarily say that Mac Jones is absolutely the guy moving forward. He may well be. He was a first-round pick last year, uh, but you have to at least wonder about that one. What does Tennessee do? Ryan Tannehill's out of guarantees. They're still winning a lot of games with him, and they like him a lot, so he may well be the guy. But, you know, do they look elsewhere? I'm just, like, scrolling down. The Colts obviously have a quarterback question. Texans, big quarterback question. Uh, what happens with the Raiders? They extended Derek Carr, but it's not on a prohibitive type of contract extension where they couldn't look to go do something else. Uh, the Commanders, yeah. Taylor Heineke's playing really well. At some point, you'd think they're considering a contract extension if he holds down that job, but at what level? And would that preclude them from going out and doing something else? Go, I mean, keep going down the list. The Lions, who knows with Jared Goff? The Falcons, who knows where they're at? Obviously, and, New Orleans and, and Carolina. And I'm not sure that this draft ton. situation is going to be – I'm not sure the draft class is going to be as good as everyone thought. So, like, yeah, we're going to be doing this, but you look at the options and it's like Baker – Jimmy G, who Jimmy G's played great. Do the 49ers move on from him? Like, I think they do, but are we sure? Are we sure? You got Jordan Love. That's, that's a real question. Green Bay, and what is he? Like, I, I have no idea. So this is going to be our offseason. Welcome to it. Tom Brady is a free agent. Lamar Jackson is unsigned, although he'd most likely get tagged. Daniel Jones, there's Definitely questions. Good. Do you tag him? You can only tag one of him or Saquon. Do you extend him? I mean, this is... We had fun last year. Uh, I mean, fun in relative terms is extremely stressful. But we had fun covering just all the movement. And this kind of looks like it's going to be a similar type of an offseason. Are you already thinking ahead to free agent frenzy, Ian? Are you getting excited? 
It's only it's only like uh, three and a half months away. Everyone says the same thing to me. Oh, are you excited for a free agency? This is my excited face. Everyone else gets excited. You have the yeah. same look on your face as when I remind my wife that I have to go to the Combine two weeks after the Super Bowl. It's a very similar uh, type of reaction. We are, as Andrew Groover reminds me in my ear, going to have a free agency frenzy special on the insiders. We're going to try to do this at the Super Bowl and other major events, too. So keep keep uh, watching the show. We enjoy having you here. All right. So a few other things to get to before we wrap up this episode of the insiders. A couple of other injury updates we want to mention. So stick around. We mentioned in the first block Kyler Murray saying that he expects to be back this week, Ian, from his hamstring injury. Do we really expect Kyler to be in the lineup against the Chargers? I think it makes some sense for him to be back. I mean, the team needs him. He's had two weeks off. It was a moderate hamstring strain. I don't think it was anything serious. So him being back makes a lot of sense. Usually, Tom, when guys say they're expected back, they are back. Him and Cliff Kingsbury both on the same page. So, yeah, I think the Cole McCoy experience is going to be put on the shelf a little bit, and we'll see Kyler Murray in a game. Cardinals got to win. They just got to win. And we'll see if we can, they can get back some of those offensive linemen, too, which obviously created some additional stress on them in the past couple of weeks. Not having an offensive line coach, also not particularly helpful when you're going up against Nick Bosa and the 49ers. All right, before we go here, it's the day before Thanksgiving as we record this episode, so we just wanted to say thank you. To our families, including mine here. My wife, Sarah, is going to make Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow early before I have to head downtown Minneapolis for the Vikings game against the Patriots. It kind of syncs up okay. You know, the early Thanksgiving dinner, that's good. Our girls, Tegan and Finley, very thankful for all of them, Ian, uh, as I'm sure you feel the same way about your family. I mean, here's my family. God, great hair on a couple of these people. Uh, I love my family, too. They put up with so much. I don't know how, I don't know why. Thanksgiving's fun because you get to remind yourself of what they do. We also have Mike Garofolo. He loves his family also, I assume. Since we benched him, he's not here, but we know Mike loves his family, right, Tom? As far as we're aware, absolutely. In fact, he loves them so yeah. much that he's yeah. with them and not with us on this particular episode of The Insiders. Uh, one more injury update, by the way, since it's quarterback mania. Lamar Jackson did not participate today because of a hip injury. So add that to the list. Plenty of drama. Thank you for joining this episode of The Insiders. We're with you 8 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday across all fast streaming platforms. They're free apps on your smart TV. Catch every episode afterwards on the NFL's YouTube page as well. For Ian Rappaport, I'm Tom Pellicero. See you.